this is a survey talk, but uh, I will present some new results, and these new results will uh, be joint work with Ferenc Bench and Martin Bordbeni. Ferenc Bench was my PhD student, but now he's a postdoc at the University of Amsterdam. Martin Bordbeni is a master student, and he will be only a PhD student in September, but he had already he has already five papers or six papers, so he's very active. Okay, so this will be mainly a survey talk. Um, let me first start with some motivation. So let me be a non-negative matrix, and you would like to say approximate the permanent. And we introduce this strange looking expression, which of course contains a lot of uh, uh, quantity, which looks like an entropy. So this is called a Better permanent. Uh, um, the supremum is along all doubly stochastic matrices. Now, actually, it's quite uh, fast to compute this approximation, and because it's a uh, concave function, so so Leonid Gurvich that this permanent, this this better permanent is actually a lower bound for the permanent. Now, I don't want you to memorize this formula. It, it makes no sense, so don't try it. Uh, you just have to remember that there is some formula we can compute, and this gives a lower bound for the permanent of the matrix. Now, let me specialize this to, to uh, the number of perfect matchings of a, a irregular bipartite graph. Since if we have a bipartite graph, we can create this incidence matrix or the adjacency matrix, and simply one expression in the permanent will be will correspond to a, a perfect matching in in the bipartite graph. So here you can see that this. Uh, oops, I should move instead of draw. Yes. Okay, sorry. I should still learn to, how to use this. So, so this edge corresponds to this one because it's, it's the second. Here, this edge corresponds to the second row six. So this one. So this way, uh, we have a bijection between the non-zero term of the. Uh, permanent and the number of uh, and the number of perfect matchings, and the previous theorem reduces to this very simple looking thing that the number of perfect matchings is this quantity, so it's simply a constant depending on on d d minus one to the d minus one over d to the d minus two uh, and as power. Um, this. Yes. So, so although there were some very complicated-looking expression for this beta permanent, in this special case, it gets very blind. Now, later I will explain that this blindness is actually not a bug; it's a feature. If we don't have this uh, blindness, then, then it actually predicts that the problem is computationally hard. What I mean by that? For instance, yesterday we had a talk on the hardcore model, and we have seen that there is a phase transition at so that in the NIM analysis talk we had this phase transition at d minus one to the d minus one. Oops, sorry, d minus two, d minus to the d, and below here we had effective algorithms, and here we have MP hardness. And what happens is that this beta approximation is actually balancing here, and here it really depends on the graph G. In many cases, I will assume that the graph G is deregular just to simplify things. Um, when, when I speak about blindness, practically it means that the beta approximation depends only on the universal cover tree of the graph. So, 
So in case of a d-regular tree, uh, where the universe are covered tree is a d-regular tree, so actually the beta approximation only depends on, on this d and of course on, on the number of vertices. So that was the motivation. And now uh, let me give a, a plan of this whole talk. So I will introduce factor graphs and beta approximations in general. And then I will elaborate on, on the question, what happens if I want to define this quantity for the infinite regular tree, and I would like to connect it with graph limit theory. And then I will also elaborate on this other phenomenon that beta approximation is quite often a large band. And at the very end, I will, I will describe something interesting. So how we can study non-spin models. This is strange because we will see that somehow this beta approximation really, really defined for, for spin models, but this will come later. So Peter, I think Eric Rigoda has a question about how did you get this beta permanent formula from the original permanent definition? Um, so I will explain immediately how I will generally, how can I generally define the beta approximation and a special case will, will be this beta permanent. So this will come immediately. Okay. Okay, so let, let's introduce factor graphs. So factor graphs have two kinds of nodes. There are function nodes and there are variable nodes. So function nodes will be denoted by a little square letter and variable nodes will be a little circles. That will be a picture. And for each variable node, there is an alphabet from which it takes the values. Like in easy model, it's plus and minus one. In hardcore model, it's occupied or unoccupied. In, in coloring models, it's the cube colors, if we have cube colors. Um, yes, and for each function node, there will be a, a function which, which evaluates this whole, whole quantity. And so the partition function is just the following thing. We run through all, uh, all variables. So for all variable nodes, we see what kind of variable it takes and we compute what the actual function takes on, on these variables and then we sum up. From the next example, it will be pretty clear. So here we have, a, here we have four function nodes with squares, three variable nodes with circles x, y, z, and then if we want to compute the partition function, we compute what, what the first function takes on x and y, was the second on x, y, z, and so on. And we sum up all these things. Okay, so that's, that's the partition function of a factor graph. Is there any question about it? Anyway, please interrupt me if you have any questions. So I'm happy to answer questions. Okay, so that's the partition function. Now I will show two sub-models which I will use as a running examples. And it will be pretty clear that they are special cases of this general model, but later there will be a nice picture about it. So one, one thing I would like to use as a running example is this pairwise spin model, where we have a matrix, a symmetric matrix N, which is of size R by R, and the vector mu, which is of size only, this is just a vector, so this is a mistake. And so we have a spin, which is one of the R values for each, each uh, uh, vertex. We pick some of these values. We have a vertex width, so this is a vertex width here. And for each edge, we will get a, a weight of the edge. For the, for the distribution. Again, if you know the easing model, then in easing model, n is simply e to the beta, 
e to the beta e to the minus beta e to the minus beta and if you have an external field then maybe we use e to the capital beta capital b and e capital minus b okay so for instance for the easy model uh, the other model is subgraph counting polynomial here we, what we do is the following we have a graph g let's assume that d regularity simplifies things and then for each subset of the edges we compute a, a degree n monomial as follows that for each degree we introduce a variable so there will be a variable for x0 there will be a variable for x1 and so on x4 same or, or xd and then if we have a subgraph we just see what happens for each vertices what was what is its degree so for instance if we have this complete graph on five vertices and we take the empty subgraph then all vertices will have degree zero so this will give a x zero to the fifth uh, i managed to uh, okay let me erase it and if we have an edge then we have two vertices with degree one and three vertices that are, have degree zero so this is 10 well, because we can choose 10 with the edges or well, if we choose the complete subgraph then then we get a 10 x4 to the fifth okay so that's that's the subgraph counting polynomial in advance I would like to mention a, a very simple idea that if all x size are non-negative numbers then of course we can say that this is at least x0 to the x because we just take the, the empty subgraph it works when x i are all on non-negative you may see that this gives a very bad bound but actually it will later it will turn out that sometimes it, it's it's quite good. Okay, so why would anybody care about this subgraph counting polynomial? First of all, if you just plug in, say, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, then it counts the number of perfect matchings because it the only terms which remains where all degrees are 1, and this exactly means that we count perfect matchings. If, say, we want to plug in something where uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, then it counts the subgraphs where each degree is either 0 or 3. So this, this counts the three regular subgraphs, not necessarily um, induced. Okay, so, so that's quite simple, but actually it counts many more things. For instance, one can encode the easing model with this. So there is a vector v beta such that if we consider the uh, the partition function of the easing model, then then actually it's e equal with this f g v beta. But it's more interesting that this is not the only vector, one vector with this property. So one can use various other uh, vectors. Also, let me mention that if d is even, then, then we can also compute, now I, I don't know whether it's only me who can see the bottom of the slide. So you can also count the number of Eulerian orientation. So just recall that the Eulerian orientation is an orientation where everywhere we have the same number of in degree and odd degree and so for instance if you have a four regular graph it turns out that you can get the Eulerian orientations number of Eulerian orientation if you have this whole thing at 3 over 2 0 1 over 2 0 3 over 2 um, okay so most of them is trivially a, a factor graph model in the first case the function nodes are this uh, little squares here for vertex weights and for edge weights we have this uh, this n which computes 
what it sees on 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 the vertices so say it sees one and minus one then it computes an e to the minus beta and it computes an e to the capital beta and the e to the minus beta b okay the other in the other case is in some sense dual because the function was we corresponds to the origin the vertices of the original node and and the variable nodes are zero or one zero if it is not included in the subgraph one if it is included in the subgraph okay so many we can compute many things with this uh, factor graph model hardcore model permanence matchings easing model uh, all area orientations there are of course examples which we cannot compute say spanning trees or spanning forests or acyclic orientations so these are not somehow locally checkable things okay now i will introduce a better approximation which looks a bit ugly for the first side later i will try to motivate it so for each variable node v we introduce a probability distribution bv on, on x and for each function node we also introduce a probability distribution but not on a but on the neighbors of, of a so for a function node square we introduce a probability distribution on on these neighbors and the condition that these are consistent in the following sense that the marginal of this distribution with so this vertex is exactly bv so, so if we have another function node we have to see the very same marginal at this vertex okay so we have a lot of probability distribution and they are consistent in the sense that if we have a variable node then we have to see the same marginal so this is called a locally consistent set of marginals and the uh, or pseudo marginals and and we consider the polytope of this one and next we we define this strange function so for each function node we compute the entropy plus this phi x b b x and phi x and also for each variable node we compute the entropy uh, and with the one man, we actually uh, we actually uh, uh, subtract it with one minus dv or dv minus one is the plus okay and now the beta entropy is the supremum for all pseudo marginals and and the beta function or beta approximation is, is the exponential of this beta free entropy okay so it's still a bit ugly and technical and don't try to remember it you won't really need with it unless you want to work with it but if you want to work with it then you will learn how to use it so so in case of a pairwise uh, uh, pairwise p model we actually have various matrices as as probability distributions and for each of them they have a marginal b i u for each vertex and that's how it looks like and then we have to take the maximum in case of uh, yeah yes i didn't write it what happens for for the other model but it's pretty clear that uh, we have this quantity it it's a bit scary because we have so many probability distributions and we have to maximize over them but later it will turn out that one can handle it in in many cases but to motivate a bit this whole construction and the connection with, with the origin partition function. Um, let me introduce a graph cover. So we have a graph G, say we have this small graph, and then we take a K cover, which means that 
we copy each vertex in k copies here k is two so we have two copies of one two copies of two two copies of four and two copies of three and whenever we have a, a, an edge then we put a perfect matching between those copies now we can choose any copy so when k is equal to two there is a relatively simple way to encode it we, if we put a plus then we took take two parallel edges and if we have a minus then we take two cross edges so here we have two cross edges but in general if k is bigger than two we don't have any such nice representation you can just imagine in general that there is a permutation on it and then you take the corresponding um, perfect matching okay so Wontobel has a very nice combinatorial description of this whole thing. It says that take a factor graph G, take all of its K covers. So there will be K factorial times the number of edges of K covers. Average out the, the partition functions on the K covers, take the Kth root and then take limit and that will be equivalent with a better approximation and it's and it's a very easy theorem so so once is done we understand that that when somehow we fix what kind of distribution we see on the on the vertices of the k cover then it will correspond to a, a pseudo marginal and it's really easy to prove. Nevertheless, this is a useful thing because somehow it's very combinatorial. Okay, and now I would like to study this whole question for the infinite regular tree and, and graph limit theory. So, so, first of all, let me introduce what is called the essentially large girl sequence. It, it says that for every fixed G, we have a sublinear number of short cycles, so number of cycles of length G and G n divided by the number of vertices stands to zero. And we would like to, to study a question of this type. And as I mentioned, I simplify things that taking D regular graphs always. So, so as, as my, uh, talk suggests somehow it's related to the beta approximation and indeed what we can do is that we have this very strange looking beta approximation for, for a factor graph. Now let's do the following. Let's just use the very same uh, matrix B everywhere. So let's just use the very same matrix B. Then it simplifies a lot. We get that we have vg times d over two edges so they have we will have always the same bij matrix we have the very same marginal yes i think symmetric matrix so that will be uh, same marginal and that immediately it solves the problems of of consistency too and then we get this expression that the beta approximation is at least as large as, as this quantity and then I simply introduce the maximum of this quantity. So this will somehow corresponds to the infinite D-regular tree. And the very simple theorem of Dembo, Montanari, Sly, and Sun says that Wontobel, this is actually a variant of Wontobel theorem, but for a random D-regular graph, which D on, on graph on n vertices, the expected value is this phi D to the n, power and some uh, polynomial time. Okay, but this is not exactly what we wanted. This is a random D-regular graph. We wanted limit. So somehow we wanted to say that that this beta approximation is a good approximation on large curves graphs. And let me see, show an example where it, it is indeed true. So suppose that we have a two by two positive definite matrix with positive entries, also this mu is positive. Then if you have a sequence of large girls graphs, an essential large girls graph, 
then it converges to this uh, Alan feed and which we introduced. And there are a lot of SAS theorems. So similar theorem holds true for all the real orientations for number of matchings, but not for number of perfect matchings. If you want number of perfect matchings, then you have to assume that the graphs are bipartite. Also for, for the hardcore model, if you below the phase transition, then you don't need the bipartiteness, but if you are above the phase transition, then you need uh, bipartiteness in the graph sequence. Okay, so, so let me show a few examples and it is really a lower band. So for instance, ferromagnetic easing model is such a model. Uh, generally every two by two matrix with positive determinants. Also perfect matchings for bipartite graphs and permanence. That was the first two slides. Also one can prove that for the hardcore model on bipartite graphs. Also for other orientations. And there are two general theorems, Ruozzi and Shasak Vishnoy. Now I will show just Ruozzi. Uh, before I show Ruozzi theorem, let me show just an example of Stryver theorem. So, so it says that the number of Eulerian orientation is at least two times this quantity to the nth power, and actually this quantity is, is the beta approximation of, of the Eulerian orientations. Now, actually, I already told you a proof for this fact because I said that for four regular graphs, epsilon g is fg 3 over 2, 0, 1 over 2, 0, 3 over 2. So, and I also mentioned that if we just keep the empty graph in this computation, then we get that the nth power of this one is a lower bound. So we immediately get this one. If you want the second, because I said the two times, then also choose the, the complete graph and you get another three to three over two to the hands. Okay. So so what kind of methods do we have? We have stable polynomials. Um, there are several variants. For graph covers, there are two variants. I will show one, but I won't show the other one. And this gauge transformation, which I almost showed, I didn't really show it. Um, I will explain it a bit later, was this gauge transformation. And let me mention that this whole beta approximation can be expressed with belief propagation equations. So, so there should be some useful method based on this belief propagation equations to prove such inequalities. So Ruozzi theorems make use of Wontobel theorem. So if we can prove that for any k cover, zh is at most zg to the k, then we immediately get that the average is at most zg to the k. And so by Wontobel theorem, we get that ZG is bigger than the beta approximation. And this happens if every local function is log supermodular. So if this is satisfied, then, then we get that ZG is bigger than ZBG. And this applies for, for paramagnetic easing model and, and for hardcore model on bipartite graphs. So this is a quite useful general theorem. Now, I mentioned this gauge transformation thing. I show a very special case of this idea. So the idea is that if we have this MG function, at 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, we count the number of perfect matchings. Now it turns out that this is not the only ve one vector. There is a rotation. Um, so there are rotation vectors such that if we, rotation matrices that such that if you evaluate FG at these matrices or vectors, then you get FGV. So one can introduce a family for all T in 0, 2, pi. And so for instance, perfect matchings can be written this way. 
Now we can realize that this is exactly the beta approximation. Now we cannot see, unfortunately, that now this is bigger than one because we have a lot of negative values. So this is a bit problem. So here for for uh, perfect matching, this plan does not work. It cannot work because we know that there are regular graphs without perfect matchings. But maybe one can design this technique to use for for bipartite graph, but I don't know how to do it. Nevertheless, a very similar technique can be used, for instance, the two by two positive definite matrices. So it turns out that for two by two positive definite matrices, if we consider this pairwise model, then there is a non-negative vector which takes the same values. And moreover, one can choose this non-negative vector such a way that the first coordinate is exactly the beta approximation. And then we can consider just the empty graph and this will be the uh, uh, this will be a lower bound. Now, Rhodes' theorem also gives this lower bound, but this approach has the advantage that it can also show stability. So if you have a lot of short cycles, then, then it, it, there is an exponential jump. So if you know that it contains a lot of short cycles, then suddenly the data approximation is, is just a, low, a very weak lower band. So it really shows that that beta approximation is good for essential values. Now, finally, I would like to say a few words about non-spin models. So like spanning forests, spanning trees, and things like that. So, so first of all, if we have a graph parameter P, then inspired by Wontobel theorem, we can introduce its beta approximation. We take all k cover, uh, we compute the average on the k cover, take the one over k, and we take the limit. And so we avoided this analytic step. We used just this uh, limit expression. Now you may say that, wait, how do I know that there is a limit? Okay, I can write here lim sup or limim, whatever you prefer. Um, but this is not the biggest problem with this definition. The biggest problem with this definition that I cannot use it or, or it seems useless. Um, we cannot really compute anything this way. For, for instance, spanning for us. So, so let's, Let's try and just to understand the infinite deregular tree case. And, and so, first of all, we need some theory for, for those parameters which are not, which cannot be expressed with, with factor graphs. Now, it's a bit tricky because um, I, I see no satisfactory uh, theory of generally graph parameters, but there is something which is sufficiently good substitute. This is the partition function of the random cluster model. So in random cluster model, uh, if you have a graph G, for each subset of the edges, we compute the Q times the number of components times W times on, on, on the number of edges. Um, that is a very closely related uh, function in combinatorics, this is, this is the tag polynomial. Here, instead of the number of components, we have x minus 1 to the number of components minus the number of connected components of the original times y minus 1, this one. The way I can remember it is that this is, say, if, if g is connected, then this is 0 if, it, if g is if A is connected, and this is zero if A is a forest. In other words, this is zero if A contains a spanning tree, and this is zero if A is contained in a spanning tree. Okay, so somehow they are reverse concepts or dual concepts. And then we can express the that polynomial with the random cluster model in a quite straightforward way. So that will be Q and that will be W. Okay, so that polynomial comp 
uh, you can be used to compute a lot of things spanning trees, spanning forests, acyclic orientation, strongly connected orientations. Also, we can count proper colorings or nowhere zero flows. We can compute various probabilities. So it computes a lot of things. Uh, so it's actually a relatively good substitute for a theory of, of graph parameters. And what we proved with Ferenc Bench is the following that this limit exists, so you can take the logarithm if you prefer to get the previous quantities. If x is at least 1, and y is between 0 and 1. So it turns out there is a phase transition as at x equal d minus 1. We, we get this expression. And for x bigger than d minus 1, we get this expression. This does not depend on y, but this is just because y is between 1 and 0. OK. So this, for instance, means that for forests and acyclic orientations of spanning for us and acyclic orientations we can compute the limit uh, so so with some generosity we, we can say that somehow this is the better approximation for these quantities on for the infinite irregular trees moreover actually we can compute more more values this is for the random cluster model this time. So for Q at least two and W at least zero, it, we can we can determine this this limit. This limit will be uh, a maximum of a trigonometric polynomial. So we have this trigonometric polynomial, which is not very complicated. It's just uh, this power of a linear. Uh, uh, trigonometric polynomial, this power of another, and plus q minus 1 times second. So it says that we can compute uh, this, this limit value for, for all these values, uh, x and y. Previous results were about integer q's. So for integer q's, there were results. Actually, even for integer Qs, there were some gaps. So, so it turns out that when D is odd and, and W was between some uh, between was some interval, then we didn't know the limit. Now this is solved for for every Q at least two and W uh, positive. And this is a so this is with bench. Bench, and this is the new result with, with Borbini and Bench. It was Borbini and Bench. Um, so, so that's what we can do. We can introduce this beta approximation, the infinite irregular tree for this stat polynomial. And we have, we can also prove stability theorem. Too. So if there are a linear number of short cycles, then, then this beta approximation is exponentially smaller than, than the real value. Okay, so thank you for all your attention.